June 19, 2005 Vision, Step to Renewal and Growth Recently, someone was talking of an organization of which he was a member. He suggested that for a long time it seemed that they were in the waiting room of a hospital hoping for direction that would help them. Then something happened and they felt like they were in the emergency room. Soon thereafter, hope returned as if medical care was given. But most recently, he believed the best description for the organization's status was hospice care for the terminally ill. Could we use this image for our church? It is clear that our church needs to be re-energized. Are we in a waiting room? Waiting for what? Or rather, should we panic because we need emergency procedures? Or should we only expect to be made comfortable until we die? Or in fact, are we failing to see the possibility of health available from cooperating with God? It's been said that a characteristic of an insane person is that she or he repeats the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. If we hope to find life and growth, we must adapt to a new evangelization to which Pope John Paul called us. New evangelization means that we must look for new ways to proclaim the gospel without attempting to change it. It cannot abandon the message, Jesus Christ, for the media of presentation. That certainly does not mean abandoning methods of evangelization that have worked for centuries. Certainly the parish structure is the fundamental vehicle for evangelization. Stronger parishes will mean a stronger eparchy and a stronger church. But as in the recent words of Pope Benedict, parishes must assume a more missionary attitude in daily pastoral care. He asked parishes to be open to a more intense collaboration with all the living forces that the church has at her disposal. He said, it is very important in this connection that communion be reinforced between the parish structures and the various charismatic realities, so that the mission reaches all realms of life. The church is often called forth by individuals and or smaller communities who see possibilities. The church has always been marked by a symbiotic relationship between the institutional and the charismatic. Sometimes this is a leader like St. Basil who established monasticism as we know it. Sometimes someone like the Fools of Christ or St. Francis of Assisi help the church to return to the simple yet difficult message of the cross and resurrection. Sometimes it is presented by even someone who is not completely correct in his or her vision. Such a person can be instrumental in helping the church to re-examine itself, a result of which will not completely agree with the individual. Similarly, groups of individuals may be led to various emphases in the Christian life monasticism, fraternal organizations, spiritual movements, secular institutes, even groups within parishes, for example a men's club, have done much to re-energize us. Our eparchy is a small portion of the universal church. 2005 is only a moment in the history of the centuries-old yet ageless church. Everything we consider must be put into this perspective. It is, of course, the Holy Spirit who gives direction to the Church. When trying to discern the prompting of the Spirit, we must give each person or group an opportunity to prove themselves, unless there is a danger of harm to them or to the Church. Even when the Church cannot completely support a new direction, we dare not dismiss it without careful consideration. The new evangelization depends on all of us. We dare not be satisfied with simply making our church comfortable until we die, hospice care. We know we must do something different if we want different results. Now is not the time to give up or to stop trying. Dialogue and charity must supplant competition. Let us listen to each other and prayerfully consider various alternatives. Let us speak boldly yet humbly. No one of us has all the answers. 
Let us remember that we can plant, we can tend, but only God can give growth. He has promised that if we are faithful to him, even the gates of hell will not prevail against us.